This is my community. A community is a place where a group of people live together. There are communities everywhere on Earth. There are small communities and large communities too. Communities have some things in common, but each one is different and special too. Let's learn all about communities. People in a community work. Work is a job that you do. People in a community work. Work is a job that you do. Many grown-ups work at all kinds of jobs. Some people are firefighters. Some people deliver mail. Some people are teachers. Some people work in restaurants. Some people work driving big trucks. There are all kinds of different jobs that people work at. Most people work so they can earn money. Money helps them buy the things they need or want. A need is something that people have to have to stay alive. Food and water are needs. Our bodies need food for energy and to help us grow. We need water to keep our bodies working. People also need a place to live. A place to live is called a shelter. A shelter keeps out the wind, rain, and cold. A shelter can be a house or an apartment. Another need people have are clothes. People wear clothes to protect their skin and keep themselves warm. People also need medicine. Medicine makes us better when we feel sick. Besides needs, people also have wants. Wants are things we don't need to live, but they make life better. Wants are things like toys, video games, and vacations. Needs and wants cost money. People work to earn money so they can buy the things they need and want. Earning money is like trading. For example, a farmer runs a stand where he sells vegetables that he grows on his farm. When someone comes to his stand and buys something they want, like tomatoes, they give the farmer something he wants, money. So they make a trade, money for vegetables. Money is very useful because you can use it to trade for anything. Trading with money is called buying. People do all different kinds of things to make money. Some people sell the things they make. The people in this company make computer parts. This company is a producer. A producer is a person or company that creates a product. Something someone makes is called a good. Other people don't sell things. They sell a service. A service is something you do for someone else. Some people earn money by running their own business. This man's business is running a dairy farm. The cows produce milk. The farmer collects the milk and sells it to companies that package the milk and sell it to stores. This woman owns a hairdressing salon. She provides a service of caring for people's hair. This person does not own a business. He works for a logging company. He is an employee. An employee is a person who works for a company or a person. People work to earn money. They provide goods and services that people in the community need and want. People and businesses are part of a community's economy. Economy is the way a community produces and uses its money, goods, and natural resources. Natural resources are things found in nature that people use. For example, this farmer lives in a farming community in California. The farmers use the soil to grow crops like wheat and corn. This farmer raises cattle. The business of growing crops and raising animals is called agriculture. The food you eat comes from farms. Agriculture is important to people and communities everywhere. 
Another important part of our economy is manufacturing. Manufacturing is the business of making things. Some communities are known for the things they make. Detroit, Michigan is known for making automobiles. Many people who live in Detroit work in a car factory. A factory is a place where things are made. Farming communities and manufacturing communities are very different, but they're both very important because each community provides goods and services the other community needs. Communities cannot produce all the products and services they need, so they must trade. Trade means buying or selling goods and services. Some communities import or buy goods made in a different place. Today, food and manufactured products are shipped to countries and communities all over the world. Selling products to other places is called exporting. Cars made in Detroit are exported around the world. When you think about it, many people work in your community to help make it a great place to live. For example, teachers work in your schools to help educate all the children who live in the community. Police and firemen work in a community to help keep everyone in your community safe. Other people in your community work for businesses that provide products or services that you need. For example, there are carpenters who help to build the homes people live in. Some people work for the sanitation department. They pick up garbage from your home and bring it to a place where garbage can be treated and gotten rid of. Some garbage is recycled or used again. Some people work for your community's government. Government is made up of people who run the community. Some government workers make laws that keep things fair and safe for everyone. Many people do jobs that they don't get paid for. They are called volunteers. People volunteer because they want to help others in their community. Some people volunteer to help when their community has an election. Some people volunteer to be firefighters. Others volunteer to help kids to read. Some groups volunteer help to clean up their community. Volunteer work is important to a community. Volunteers help communities be a better place. We've seen that people in communities work at many different jobs. Whether it's providing a service or product. People work to make money and to help communities grow. This is my community. A community is a place where a group of people live together. There are communities everywhere on Earth. There are small communities and large communities too. Communities have some things in common, but each one is different and special too. Let's learn all about communities. Geography affects communities and the people who live there. Geography is the study of land and water and the way people, plants, and animals live there. The environment makes up a community's geography. The environment is the natural world around us. There are many kinds of environments. Environments can be flat or hilly, lakes, Rivers, mountains, and the forests are different kinds of environments. In each different environment, you will find different kinds of animals and people. You see, a community's environment and geography affects the way people live. The food they eat, the clothes they wear, and the houses they build all depend on their surroundings. For example, there are many communities in Northern California that are surrounded by forests. The forest has an effect on the people who live around it. 
Many of them have jobs in the forestry industry. River communities aren't the only places that depend on water. Trees are a natural resource. A natural resource is anything found in the environment that people can use to survive. The trees are cut down and sawed into boards called lumber. Lumber is used to build homes all over the country. Trees are also cut down to make paper and other products. When trees are cut down, new trees are planted to take their place. This way, we don't use them all up. This is the Mississippi River. It's the largest river in the U.S. Towns and cities near the Mississippi River are called river communities. They depend on the river for many things. They use it to transport food and other goods from one place to another. Some boats that travel up and down the Mississippi are called paddle boats because they have a large paddle that makes the boat go forward. Ships can take oil, farm goods, and even people up and down the river. The river connects communities to each other. River communities aren't the only places that depend on water. There are also ocean communities. Many communities are by an ocean. Some ocean communities have harbors where boats and ships can dock. A harbor is a body of water that protects against the wind and waves of the ocean. Large ships from all over the world sail into these harbors carrying goods. Once they're unloaded, the goods can be placed in large trailers or containers and shipped across the country. When goods are shipped into a community, it's called importing. When goods are shipped out of the community, it's called exporting. Fishing is also important to an ocean community. In San Francisco, Fisherman's Wharf is a place where people buy and sell fresh fish caught from the ocean that very same day. New York City is a city surrounded by water. New York is an island. The people who live in New York City make use of the water around them. People work in ports and harbors. Some people drive large boats that carry goods. Other people work in markets selling goods that were imported from other parts of the world. For people to come and go off the island, they need to travel over bridges or through underwater tunnels. New York City has lots of bridges and tunnels that connect the island to the mainland. During the beginning of the 20th century, many people sailed in boats from other parts of the world to America. They were called immigrants. They landed in the New York City Harbor. The arrival of all these diverse and different people from all over the world made New York City grow into a very diverse community. People who live in the mountains experience a different kind of geography than the people who live by the ocean. People in mountain communities might work in mines. Miners dig for gold, silver, and other rocks and minerals. During the gold rush of 1849, a lot of people rushed to the mountains of California to mine for gold. Some mountain communities are very cold and get lots of snow. People in mountain communities can go skiing for fun. Other people may go hiking or canoeing down a river. The opposite of a mountain community is a valley community. Valley communities are areas of land in between mountains. The soil in valleys is usually very rich, which allows crops to grow. People in farming valleys can grow all different kinds of crops. California has a very famous valley called the Napa Valley. Many farmers in Napa Valley own vineyards. A vineyard is a farm that grows grapes to make wine. 
Today we've learned that communities are built in all kinds of geographical locations. Near forests, rivers, oceans, mountains, valleys and more. And no matter where a community is built, it's shaped by its geography. This is my community. A community is a place where a group of people live together. There are communities everywhere on Earth. There are small communities and large communities too. Communities have some things in common, but each one is different and special too. Let's learn all about communities. In my community, there are lots of statues and monuments. Statues and monuments help us remember what happened in the past. Do you have statues or monuments in your community? They tell you about our community's history. History is what happened in the past. Everyone's community has a history. Some communities' history started in ancient times. Ancient means a long time ago. Native Americans have built communities in North America since ancient times. There were many Native American communities all over North America. They can be divided into four regions, the Eastern Woodlands, the Great Plains, the Southwest Desert, and the Northwest. Native people who lived in the Eastern Woodlands made homes from trees. Their homes were called wigwams. Native Americans cooked, ate, and slept in the wigwam. Some Native Americans who lived in the woodlands built larger homes from trees called longhouses. Many families could live in a longhouse. Some Native Americans who lived in the southwest deserts built their communities high up on the side of cliffs to protect themselves from enemies. Others built their homes from adobe, a brick made from clay and grass. Their homes were called pueblos. The Native Americans who lived on the Great Plains lived in homes called teepees. Teepees were tents that could be packed up and taken with them as they followed the buffalo herds. Native Americans who lived in the Northwest used trees to build wooden houses with flat boards. They also painted their homes with special designs. Past Native American communities were very different from our communities today. That's because communities change. Communities can change when different people meet. That's what happened to the Native Americans. Their communities began to change when people from Europe came to America. The people from Europe sailed in small boats across the Atlantic Ocean in search of gold, religious freedom, and the hope of a better life. One group of Europeans that settled in America were called the Pilgrims. They set up a colony. A colony is a place that is ruled by another country. The Pilgrims built a community in a place they called Plymouth Plantation, which is now in the state of Massachusetts. The Pilgrims used the wood from the forests to build their homes and community buildings like a meeting house. The Pilgrims also had to plant their own crops for food. In the beginning, Native Americans taught the Pilgrims how to plant corn. The Pilgrims and Native Americans had a big meal to celebrate the harvest. Today we remember that celebration with a holiday called Thanksgiving. A holiday is a day where we remember something special that happened in the past. Life for the Pilgrims was very different than our lives today. They had to raise their own crops and animals for food. They had to share a community oven to bake bread. Pilgrim children did not go to school. Their parents taught them to read at home. The colony at Plymouth was like many early European communities in America. However, as time went on, 
more and more people traveled to America, and soon small communities began to change and grow bigger. For example, there was a small farming community in Virginia called Middle Plantation. It soon grew into a small city named Williamsburg. In Williamsburg, some people were farmers, but most had other skilled jobs. There were shoemakers, brickmakers, carpenters, and blacksmiths. There were small shops too, where people could buy things they needed and wanted. Some people in Williamsburg lived in two-story wooden houses. They traveled in carriages pulled by horses along paved roads. Williamsburg was one of the largest cities in colonial America. In 1775, there were 13 English colonies in America along the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. But the colonies fought a war with England to become a new country, the United States of America. After the war, new communities would spring up all the way to the Pacific Ocean. At first, people explored the frontier. Building a new community is very hard to do. Men, women, and children worked hard to build homes and farms. Pioneers laid the foundation for new communities, and over time, communities all across America began to grow and change. Soon, many communities had stores where people could buy the things they needed. Communities also began to build schools where children could learn reading, writing, and arithmetic. Communities grow and change for many reasons. One reason is because people come up with new ideas and inventions to make life easier. It's called technology. Technology is the use of ideas and tools to meet people's needs. In the past, farmers had to plant crops by hand. Then people invented new machines to help farmers plant and harvest crops more quickly and easily. In the past, it was difficult to travel from one place to another. Then people created new forms of transportation. Transportation is a way of getting from one place to another. Trains, cars, planes, and ships help people travel faster and easier to different places. Technology has helped to change communities in America and all over the world. Over time, communities change, but the reasons why people live together in a community haven't changed. One reason people live in a community. Is that people need each other. Everyone has different skills and abilities that can provide the things people in the community need and want. Some people can build homes. Other people can grow vegetables, while others like to teach. One way people get the things they need and want is through trading. People have always traded with each other. In the past. Pilgrims and the Native Americans traded with each other. Today, people still trade for goods and services they need and want. It's fun and interesting to learn about the past. We can learn about the past through traditions. A tradition is something that a group of people do together that other people may not do. Native Americans have special traditional dances that were done in the past that they still do today. That's an example of a tradition. A special art is a tradition too. Traditions come from the past. Today, many Mexican Americans continue the tradition of piñatas in many of their celebrations. Many other Americans have adapted piñatas into their own family traditions. Communities have traditions too. Many communities have parades and carnivals to celebrate their history. The celebrations are part of the community's tradition. 
We've seen how people since ancient times have lived in communities. We've learned how and why communities change. We've learned that traditions bring the past, present, and future of a community together. This is my community. A community is a place where a group of people live together. There are communities everywhere on Earth. There are small communities and large communities too. Communities have some things in common, but each one is different and special too. Let's learn all about communities. In every community, people have to follow rules. Grown-ups and kids too. For example, there are rules to obey when you board the school bus. One person at a time makes getting on the bus safe. In your classroom, you probably have to raise your hand if you'd like to speak in class. That's a rule that makes it fair for everyone to have a turn. Playgrounds have rules too. Playground rules make it fair for everyone to play and stay safe. Every community has rules too. Our government leaders make rules for everyone in the community to follow. The rules of a community are called laws. Some laws help to make it safe for people who live in a community. For example, when grown-ups drive a car, they have to follow the rules of the road. They have to stop for a red light. They have to follow the speed limit signs. That's the law. On the street, there are signs that tell people what they can and cannot do when they're driving. It's a law that everyone wears seatbelts when riding in a car. Seatbelts keep you safe. It's a law in most communities that you have to wear a helmet when you ride a bicycle. It's for your own safety. Following rules and laws is part of being a good citizen. A citizen is a person who lives in a community and has certain rights and duties. Good citizens understand that laws protect everyone. Our government has to follow rules too? Some of the rules the government must follow are in the Constitution. The Constitution is a set of rules that explains how a country is to be governed. Part of the Constitution is the Bill of Rights, which explains our most important rights as citizens. For example, we have the right to disagree with our government, and we can't be punished for disagreeing. The Bill of Rights makes sure we have the freedom to say what we want. We also have the rights to be treated just like everyone else. It doesn't matter if you are a boy or girl, where you come from, what you believe, or the color of your skin. One of our most important rights is the right to vote. A vote is a choice we make. Grown-ups vote to choose leaders of the community who make the laws for everyone who lives in the community. To make sure people follow the rules, communities have police. When the police think someone has not followed the law, the person may have to go to court. In a court, people get a chance to explain what they did before a judge. If the court decides they broke a law, the person will get punished. A punishment is something you have to do when you break a rule or a law. One kind of punishment is to have to pay a fine. Paying a fine means paying money. Another punishment may be going to jail. Jail is a place where people must go until a punishment is finished. Sometimes, leaders decide that a law is not right. At one time, there was a law that said women could not vote. Many women got together to demand the right to vote. Government leaders changed the law. The new law says that women do have the right to vote. Sometimes, people in the community can work together to change laws by speaking out against it. Another way to change a law is to vote for leaders who think the way you do. Many times, we need new laws when there is new technology. Technology uses science to help make life easier. 
A long time ago, people drove carriages pulled by horses. Then cars were invented. When cars were a new technology, it was important for leaders to make laws that would keep everyone safe. Rules and laws are important to every community. Some laws help keep people safe. Some laws protect our property and our rights. Following rules and laws is part of being a good citizen in your community. This is my community. A community is a place where a group of people live together. There are communities everywhere on Earth. There are small communities and large communities too. Communities have some things in common, but each one is different and special too. Let's learn all about communities. People live, work, and play in a community. There are thousands of communities all across the world. A community can be big, like New York City, that has millions and millions of people and thousands of buildings. Or it can be as small as a farming community, like this one. There are several homes and barns in this community, lots of animals, and only a couple hundred people. No matter how large or small a town or city is, it's the people that live there that make up the community. Some communities are old and have been around for a long time. This is old Sacramento, California. People have lived here for many, many years. Some buildings have been here for over 100 years. There are also communities that are brand new with new buildings being built and new people moving in. Every community is different, but each one has something special about it. Many different people make up a community. Sometimes people move to a community from a different place. This creates diversity. Diversity happens when many different cultures and backgrounds are shared in a community. In a city like San Francisco, there are many diverse communities. This is Chinatown, one of many different communities that make up San Francisco. Diversity includes the way people dress, the food they eat, the way they celebrate events. Diversity is a wonderful thing. It builds a community and helps it grow. Every community has different types of buildings. Some buildings are called institutions. An institution is an important part of a community. An institution is a school or a library. An institution can be a park or a government building, like the town hall or a courthouse. It can also be a place of worship, like a church, temple, or mosque. Institutions make communities different from one another. Institutions allow people in a community to come together to work, learn, and play. There are many people who work for a community. Teachers work for the community. Their job is to educate the children who live there. Policemen and firefighters work for the community too. Their job is to keep a community safe. Trash collectors work to keep a community clean and healthy. Postal workers deliver letters and packages to people who live in a community. Each community has leaders. Leaders work to make the community better for everyone. Some communities have mayors. Other communities have directors. Mayors and directors work with other community leaders to make laws for the community. Laws help make a community safe for the people who live there. When many people work together, they can make a community a nice place to live. There are different types of communities. Large communities have lots of people, many buildings, and many streets. 
small communities have less people and more open space. These two communities are different because of their size. There are three types of communities: urban, suburban, and rural. An urban community can be a city like San Francisco. An urban community has a large population. A population is the number of people living in a community. Since so many people live in a city, they all have to live very close together. Urban communities have hundreds of apartment buildings that many people can live in together. Urban areas can also have thousands of homes. Since there are so many people in an urban community, there are more opportunities for jobs. Cities have office buildings where there are many different kinds of businesses. Some cities are built around industries. An industry is all the businesses that make one kind of product or provide one kind of service. For example, the city of Detroit, Michigan, is centered around the automobile industry. There are many factories in and around Detroit, where many people work to make cars and trucks. Detroit is nicknamed the Motor City. Urban areas also have many restaurants and different kinds of stores. There are markets where people can buy fresh fruits and vegetables, and retail shops where people can buy clothes and shoes. An urban community has lots of fun things for people to do. There are theaters to go to to see shows and concerts. Many cities have museums or art galleries to explore. Sometimes, urban communities have colleges and universities filled with students. This is Yale University. It's located in the city of New Haven, Connecticut. New Haven is an urban community. People living in urban communities need a way to get from one place to another. Many people use public transportation to get somewhere. Buses are one type of public transportation. Subways are another. Subways are trains that travel beneath the streets and carry passengers throughout a city. Other cities, like San Francisco, have trolley cars that help people travel around the city. Many people use public transportation to go somewhere. Some urban communities have an airport. People can travel from their community to another one far, far away. Just outside of a city, there are suburban communities. Suburban communities were once farmlands. Then people moved out of the city and bought up farmland to build houses and neighborhoods. Many people moved from the city into the suburbs to escape the crowds and noise of city life. A suburb has fewer people than an urban community. Its population is much smaller. Suburbs have places to live, schools, and businesses, just like an urban community. But since there is more land in the suburbs, everything is spread further apart. Highways were built so people could travel from the suburb to the city. Since highways made it more convenient for people to travel, more people moved out of the city. And more suburbs were built. People who travel from the suburbs to the city for work are called commuters. Some people who live in larger suburbs don't need to travel to work at all. They can work and live in the same community. Suburban communities have stores, banks, restaurants, and provide many services that people need. Today, most Americans live in the suburbs. There are thousands of suburbs all across the country. Communities with the smallest populations are called rural communities. In a rural community, you might find more trees and animals than people. A place is rural when it has very few people and is surrounded by countryside. Rural communities are located far away from cities. 
Many people who live in rural communities work on farms where they grow crops and raise animals. Some work as ranchers or farmers to raise sheep or cattle. This is a dairy farm. Here, a dairy farmer milks the cows every day. Then the milk is shipped to urban and suburban communities. Rural communities may not have a lot of people or buildings, but there are lots of wide open spaces to hike and explore. Urban communities, suburban communities, and rural communities are very different from each other. But it's their differences that make each community so important. You see, all of these communities rely on each other. Businesses in cities need workers from the suburbs. Urban and suburban areas need the food products that are produced in rural communities. Each community helps the other. We've seen that communities are large and small. Different communities have many things in common. But it's their differences that make each community unique and special. <laughs> like us. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Comment, Comment below. below.